Oh, hi and welcome to the studio. So this is a versus video and I'm going to do a 285 pound brush. Yes, that's 285 pounds versus 25 pound brush comparison. Is it worth spending this money or should you save the money and buy one of these? Let's get into it. So I'm going to start first of all by just talking about these brushes for a second. Um, some of the construction methods and the things that go into them, I guess. First of all, I suppose sizes, you know, I've tried, I've bought these brushes because they're similar sizes. This is actually a 26 and this is a 20. So I've spoken about the, the varying sizes across manufacturers before. It can be difficult to pinpoint an exact brush size from from the sizes marked on the brush. So I tend to refer to them as small, medium and large. So these are my two large brushes. This is the one that I use. It's a, it's a Da Vinci Maestro, Tobolsky Kalinsky Sable brush. This is effectively the, the Rolls Royce of paint brushes. It's about as expensive as you can go. The only way you could probably go more expensive is by making it bigger. They do a size 30 in this brush. I think it's about 700 quid. <coughs> So it's crazy. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to justify the additional 10 times cost on this versus a, a synthetic, but let's see if I can. So a, a synthetic brush is often described as having much more snap. So that might be something you enjoy, something that you're looking for, something that you want. And by snap, I suppose what they mean is this. So as you lift your, your brush off the paper, it's going to snap back into its, its natural, full, natural shape there. Um, if I was to do this with my, with my sable brush, you can see that that maintains its shape. So it does, a sable brush won't generally have as much snap. That is, is actually a characteristic that I really like because you can shape a sable brush far more than you can shape a synthetic brush. So you can see I can do exactly that, putting a bit of water on my, onto my brush. I can create a, a flatter shape. I can twist it like that, you know, push that up so that I've got dry edges. I've got a very flat surface there. I've got points. A lot more control in terms of the shape of this brush um, compared to this one. Try and do the same thing with that, you know, it, it flicks back. Sorry, I'm putting water all over here. It flicks back into its shape. I can't form those, you know, I can fan it out a bit and form that shape. I can't, it's just, it, it feels much more plasticky, I suppose. It doesn't feel like a natural fiber to me. Um, yeah, feels a little bit artificial, a little bit synthetic, I suppose. The other thing, I suppose, is the way that these brushes are made, so, if you've got a 25 quid brush, it is put together by a machine. So all of these, these fibers, uh, it's, it's Taclon, this, this fiber. Um, they're all put into that ferrule by a machine. They're gathered together, they're trimmed, they're put into that by robots essentially. And the ability for a robot to finesse a brush in, in the way that an, and a brush maker, so somebody that makes a brush by hand, it's very different. It's far more labor intensive to make a high quality brush than one made by a robot. These are made essentially by hand. Every fiber, you know, will be, will be chosen and in different lengths to, to form the perfect shape rather than just being kind of trimmed in situ. Uh, so the, the construction methods that they use to make a brush will a, an expensive brush versus a cheap brush are going to provide you with a lovely shape. And if you compare these shapes, you know, these are, this is a much fuller body, goes down into a really nice point. It's far less body in this brush. Um, so much, it's much rounder, this brush. It won't form to as quite as fine a point all the time. I mean, that's pretty good, but this comes, will always come back to a nice point. So that's a little bit about how the brushes are put together. Um, 
the next thing obviously is, is how they used, how they respond. And one of the main characteristics of a, a natural hair or a sable brush over a synthetic brush is that they are supposed to uh, hold a lot more water. I think it's because their, their hairs are natural fibers on a, a kind of nano scale. So if you were to zoom in on those hairs, the texture of the hairs is actually much, much rougher. Uh, and that allows the paint and the pigment to stick in between those hairs until you want to release it onto the page. So a good analogy, I suppose, for this is if you were wearing a natural fiber um, jumper, something like wool or cotton, uh, if you were wearing those outside and you got wet, that's going to soak up that water really quickly. If you're wearing polyester or a nylon jumper or something, the water is just going to run off it effectively. You know, it's not going to absorb into those, into that fabric. Um, it might hold a bit of water, but it's not going to hold it in the same the same way. Uh, so I'm going to get right down to to a comparison. I'm going to see if I can show you a a paint holding capacity comparison. <laughs> um, so I'm going to grab some. Let's go with a cobalt blue. We'll mix up this blue a little bit. So we've got a cobalt blue, and in theory. This brush should hold a lot more pigment and a lot more paint. So I should have to dip this brush in less in order to cover the same sort of area. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to try and get these consistencies the same. So I'm going to try and load this brush right up. You know, get, get lots of paint, lots of water. I might just load this one up. Lots of paint, lots of water. And actually, I can tell just from doing that, that that has just sucked up most of the water that I put there and most of the pigment. So I'll say that's kind of going some way to proving the theory. I'm going to put a bit more paint here that there, that a sable or natural fiber brush will, will just hold much more pigment, much more paint. So I'm going to try and load that up as much as I can. Load this one up as much as I can. So I've got a synthetic and a sable brush loaded up with loads of paint. And let's just try and compare them. So this is my my synthetic brush. Let's put it down here and drag. Let's see we, where we run out of of pigment. Okay, so let's do the same the same comparison with this this sable brush. So Just starting to dry out there a little bit. Okay, so we're now getting to a point where it's probably about the same as this brush ended up. So you can see I've got a line here that is four times as long. You know, I've gone from a really deep loaded brush, pulled it across the page, and I've run out of paint there, you know, before I've got to the end of the page. With my sable brush, one, two, three, and yeah, it's starting to break up a little here, but it's not really until here, you know, this kind of, it delivered paint, it delivered paint, it delivered paint, and then it ran out quite quickly, so the paint just disappeared. This is kind of a, a slower, longer release, more even release of paint. Um, yeah, perfect example. I've never actually tried a test like this myself, so I've never seen this exact kind of right, but looks to me like this holds pretty much four times the amount of water and paint as that one. So I'm just going to try that again. You know, I want to make sure it's a, it's a fair test. I haven't got more paint on this than the other one. So let's load that one up and let's try it again. So we're starting here with a dark and dragging it. Dragging it, dragging it, and you see it's starting to break up. Dry, 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 dry. Virtually ran out of paint there. You know, there's there's no water and there's no paint there. Dip this in, and again. Now, I haven't got nearly as much pigment on that on that brush. I didn't have as much water on that brush either, actually. So it's a bit of a bad example, but this is gonna. run much, much further. So in terms of capacity, we will call that one nil to the sable.
um, definitely holds more capacity. Let's try another another test then, and I suppose that's that's shaping. Um, let's see how we can shape these brushes and how that will allow us to make different marks. So, just going to tear off this piece of paper, pop that down there. Now, I suppose in terms of mark making, I'm trying to think of a benefit of a, of a synthetic brush. So a synthetic brush, because it has um, more snap, it's probably going to flick better. So this is probably better for flicking. I'm just going to try a little bit of flicking over there. And you can see actually that, that flicks quite nicely. Little drip. And you know you want that snap. So that works quite well. With that. Let's put a little bit more paint here. With a sable brush, and especially a sable brush this big, I would have said that that, that flicking motion is probably going to be harder. So you can see, yeah, I suppose I get a much straighter line here. You don't get the snap back. It's quite good. So the difference here, I'm getting much longer, straighter, deeper lines than I did with this. This sable brush tends to be more of a a splatter, so a finer spray. You know, you're not getting those big, big drops of paint in a big, broad line. Sorry, I'm dripping everywhere. So, I think it has a feeling of more control. I can, you know, that's a that's an amazing flip. I can get that all the way across the paper. I could do these tight. I could imitate that sable, that uh, synthetic brush. Just doing these tiny little flicks. You know, with this, it's holding a lot of pigment. I can get that pigment to flick much further down the page, produce a consistent line. So, you know, right over the other side there. There was no way that was happening with the sable, and that's just, you know, the amount of water I think that it's holding. And I can keep going with this. It's not running out of paint very quickly. So, yeah. In terms of speed and not having to dip the brush into your palette and constantly pick up paint, uh, I think that's a, a win for the sable. Um, and certainly in terms of splashing, you know, my my thinking in my head was that more snap is going to be better for splashing, and that probably is the case. But that extra snap comes at the cost of your brush not holding as much pigment and paint and when you're splashing that's what you want lots of pigment you know lots of water all over the page or yeah in big broad lumps you know so i'd say that's another win for the sable brush in terms of splashing definitely use a sable brush for splashing um the other thing i spoke about briefly i suppose was the the shaping of the brush so um, I would be quite careful using, doing this with a brush, uh, a, a sable brush of this price, but you can shape the brush into, for example, I've got a nice flat line there. I could draw a really fine little line. I'm going to put a bit more pigment in here so you can see a little bit better. You know, I can make that, if you look at that shape, you know, I've got a real wedge shape and I can do a super thin, that bit more water on it. A super thin line that I could also then just turn, you know, and they can then go very thick. Um, and this brush, you know, for dry brushing, when you're dragging the, the paint dry over over paper to produce this texture, I think that's going to work far better with a with a sable brush. So I'm going to go into my synthetic brush here and just try that again. Let's see. Yeah, that's not, not too bad. But yeah, you can see it doesn't have quite the lightness of touch, I think. I think the, that a lot of that comes down to the shape of the, of the body, actually, in this brush. You know, where they... This brush is much more bulbous in the middle, so it's got a much... A much sort of rounder body. This is much more straight and tapered. And I think by having that, that extra shape on, on the brush, it just allows you to touch in places a bit more, a bit more easily than with, than with this one. Perhaps for dry brushing techniques, there's not a, 
there's not a lot in it, but again, I mean, what you're after with, in a brush is it holding pigment, even if it's, that is quite dry pigment, you want it to hold a lot of pigment. So again, I think you're gonna, you're gonna run out of paint faster with this. And just looking at that, you know, that paint is nearly, that brush is nearly out of paint already. So what else can we test in terms of what makes this brush so much more expensive? I guess the, the point, you know, that's another very important aspect that uh, a brush maker will will look at and they want to produce a, a a brush that comes to a really nice point and that's as much about you know how they they use long fibers and long hairs in the middle and short shorter hairs around the outside so you can always get your your brush back into this lovely fine let's get a bit more i'm going to use a bit of ultramarine in there um this really fine point so I'm just going to try and get this brush into its finest point that I can. I don't really mind what colour I've got on here. You know, try and work it into a, into a point. And I'll just show you, um, you know, on the edge of the palette, you can get it into a super nice point. I just want to see what kind of fine line I can get. You, know, you get a really nice, fine, continuous. And again, because this brush holds so much pigment, you're going to be able to carry on with these lines far longer than you would with a sable uh, with a synthetic brush sorry so you see these lines just keep on coming and just keep going with these lines i'm still not running out of paint you know still making lines holding a lot of paint let's try that on our what, what, blue paint all over my face so i'm going to grab Again, lots of pigment, lots of paint, and I'm trying to form this into the, the tightest point that I can. So this is actually a, a smaller brush. Effectively, it's a slightly smaller brush. You should be able to get a tighter, finer point on it, but I can already see that the ends of that brush are not forming a point. They're kind of a little bit splayed out. If I put that there, you can zoom right into that, hopefully. And just compare the, the two points of that brush. You can see how broken this point is. It's not coming to a perfect point. Whereas that is a lovely perfect point on that brush. So we're now going to try and use this. I am going to try my best to get this into a point. So I'm really going to you know, put, some, put some paint on it, twisting it round in a circle, trying to get that absolute tightest point. You can see some of the thin lines. You know, I've got that thin line there. Just going to try and reproduce the thinnest lines that I can. It's not bad. Oh, but you see, it's it's fat. It's not nearly as thin as this line. So it's, and you can see that you know it's not a point. I'm using it almost like a like the chisel, you know, and I'm angling it. You can see that it's got a flat shape there. I could probably get a nice fine line if I did that which is kind of making it into a chisel shape. Um, still not super fine. It's not a point. And if I was gonna, you know, if, with a chisel brush, you can't really change direction because it's gonna go fat. So if I was to start with the thin line and then try and change direction, it immediately goes fat. And that's why you want a point. And this, even though I'm trying to do this with my hands, my fingers, I mean, that's quite a good point, but what you'll find is as soon as you press too hard, your point breaks up and you no longer have that, that fine point in there. I'm just going to show you again, you know, with, the, with this, um, this sable brush, that is a beautifully formed point that stays together. And you see how I can change direction. The line stays more or less the same thickness. And yeah, super fine point. It'll always come back to that lovely point. You see how thin I can go here, just next to these lines, much, much thinner. Um, and I suppose producing thin lines in, in wildlife is, you know, there's, there's so many hairs and kind of, you can use this for, for whiskers and all sorts of stuff, splashing in the background. 
Um, but you want to be able to produce fine lines uh, at points and a sable brush is going to do a far better job at coming to a point um, than a synthetic brush would. So for me, I would always choose a sable brush over a synthetic brush. You can get sable brushes that are far cheaper than this one. As I said, this is the kind of the Rolls Royce of the sable brush world. So you can get much cheaper sable brushes and I would pick that over a synthetic one any day of the week. Whether I can justify spending 10 times the price on a Tobolsky Kolinsky sable brush, you know, with all of the fancy whatever thrown at it that makes it 285 quid, I'd probably be just as happy, I would have said, with a, a sable brush of that size that was less than half the cost. You'd probably get one for about 80 quid, um, and I imagine it would perform almost exactly the same as that one. So I really love my expensive brush. Um, wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm lucky to be able to have it. It was a gift. Um, I probably wouldn't go out and spend that sort of money on a brush for myself. Um, it's lovely to have, uh, but yeah, balances, balances is up to you. It's a huge, there's a huge difference in cost. And actually what you gain is probably not worth 10 times the price. So if I was in, yeah, if it was a position of starting out and putting a kit together, I certainly wouldn't be putting 285 quid into one brush. You can put your money more wisely into a lot of other kit, extra paints, nicer paper, that kind of stuff before you start getting into a brush that costs that kind of money. Um, try and find a, a reasonably priced sable brush would be my advice. You don't need the best uh, sable brushes that are out there. So hope that's been useful to you. I hope I've sort of conveyed a little bit about why sable is so highly prized by artists, why it's been used for hundreds and hundreds of years and why synthetic brushes still don't come as close. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Uh, there are lots of other videos like this in on this channel and also on the website so make sure you check those out and hopefully I'll see you again.